Hey everybody, Gemma Jur is on the other line making me laugh right now. Um, <laughs> we are here uh, on Fishman Live. Uh, my name is Ken Susi, and I'm at my home recording studio. A lot of people are stuck in their houses right now, and I thought it'd be cool to reach out to some of our favorite artists and ask them what they're doing during this time of crisis. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Miss <laughs> Jen Majura from Evanescence and her own solo project, right? <laughs> Absolutely right. Hello, Mr. Ken Susie. Lovely to talk to you. And hello, everybody else all over the planet. I hope everybody is home. I hope everybody stays home and stays safe. So, and uh, welcome to, um, not my home, but I, I'm visiting my parents. So welcome. <laughs> so everybody, uh, I have the chat section open at for uh, fishman.com and um, please feel free to reach out to us and we will be taking questions here and there. Um, so any anyway, can I see the questions? I can't. I don't think you can see the questions on your end because we are technically oh. Skyping right now. So, yep, yeah, this is this is the worst worst case scenario for you. Oh man! <laughs> so you're going to pick the questions for me? You can pick the really tough ones. I will. I will. When people are trying to ask you about like tone and stuff that you don't know, oh, we already have people saying hello to you. So this is actually excellent. Hi. So. Let's talk about where you are. Well, do you live, you said you're with your parents. Are you, uh, do you live in the same town as your parents? What's your deal? Do you live away from them and just visiting or? I live all the way north, like a six hour drive north from where my parents live. So I'm in the south of Germany right now. Not home because at home I would be completely isolated, which is not a bad thing, but I live on a castle all by myself. Ooh, and fancy. And I guess, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, but it's very, very lonesome, which is good when you, are distracted with a lot of people during touring and shows and festivals. But if that is not happening, you're literally sitting in nature in the middle of nowhere all by yourself. And I thought it would be nice to come visit my parents and take care a little bit about them. Like, you know, I don't want them to leave the house for grocery shopping or, or pharmacy visits or anything like that. So I'm literally running the errands. <laughs> you are an errand. The good, the good daughter. The good daughter. <laughs> so like most most musicians figure like, you know, we us musicians, we travel in airplane, not airplanes. We have like our own spaceships and our own castles. So you're pretty much, <laughs> you're pretty much fulfilling that stereotype right now, right? You own a castle, you drive a Lamborghini, right? Oh yeah, you're into cars. Well, I am into cars. It's I love Lamborghinis. I love I if I I always keep saying as soon as I'm like grown up, rich, and famous, I'm going to buy myself an Audi R8 yeah. LMS Ultra because that's my ultimate favorite. I think Tozen has one, right? He does. Yeah. I think he has one. Yeah. Damn, I'm so <laughs> jealous. I want to have a car like that too. So, what are you currently driving? A Porsche? I'm driving the smallest Audi that there is on the market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And I'm, I keep saying like it, it used to be an R8, but you know then I put it into the washer and I washed it too hot, so now it's like a very small R8. <laughs> <laughs> there's a small, there's a there's a select group of you that are complete car nerds. So there's Tosin, who has an Audi. There's uh, Misha from Periphery, right, who has yes. a couple cars, right? I think so. And there's also Herman Lee. Herman Lee. But he's into Porsche. He's into Porsche. He's into Porsche. Who else is there? On the car. Keith Mara, doesn't he? Doesn't Keith Mara? Doesn't he have like a? Keith, are you watching? Keith, do you have like an Audi R8? I really want to know. Keith, Keith doesn't. I don't think he has an R8, but he does have a nice car. He has a sports car for sure. I'm. I'm not sure. Last time we hung out, I forgot to ask. Yeah. Well. So. Yeah. I I own a. I I had my. I think it. What, what do you want to call it? A midlife crisis at 26 because I figured, you know, when. 26? Yeah, 26, you're like a, you know, you're a famous musician touring around and the next thing you know, you're like, oh, my life's probably going to be over soon, so I need a nice car. <laughs> so I ended up buying a 1981 Corvette. I'm, I'm, I come from a Corvette family, but I like the vintage cars, so. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. I would buy a Stingray, like an old Stingray. 63. That's really, really yeah, nice. Yeah, my dad owned a 63. My brother owns a uh, 71 and a 73, so. Oh, I found another one who's totally into cars, Jeff Waters. Oh, really? All right. He's into Mustang kind of stuff. I, we could talk cars all day. <laughs> I believe. But I guess people are not here to listen to us talk about cars. I think, I think they really are. Uh, I think Larry Fishman's really into cars, too. He has a t he has one of those new uh, newer Teslas, but he also used to, I don't know what it's called, but you know when you have the car that just does the, like, the land speed kind of thing? It just goes straight only. It's like super fast. 
Like it's just. Do you have a car that goes? No, he only. used to race those as a kid, Larry Fishman. Oh. There's some type of like on a real racetrack. That's yeah, amazing. like just you know, just used to go you know, just straight like as fast as you possibly got. I forget how fast he yes, got. I, I, I get it. <laughs> People are writing that Corvettes are awesome. Um, is this going to be an interview only or a musician involved also? Cars we're going to be, you know, <laughs> Jen and I are actually like, we're, we're here to talk about what she's doing. She has a lot of stuff going on beyond music. And obviously we've done plenty of product videos with Jen Fishman oriented and stuff. We're not here to sell you any product or we, we're here to like educate you on some stuff just uh, about our lives and what we're doing. So Jen, but what's that? But people just listen. If you want to have your guitars equipped with the best pickups, in the entire universe, get Fishman pickups. <laughs> that okay. was it. So, so the only thing that we've learned is that Fishman Fluence are the best pickups. Jen lives in a castle. She drives a spaceship to every show, and she owns ten Lamborghinis. <laughs> so, this is good. This is a really good interview. <laughs> so, um, do you want to give do you do you want to give everybody your address where they can meet you at your house? <laughs> <laughs> and they can take my car. For a test ride. Yeah, and my space. Because I have my own personal space shuttle to fly over to the states for every rehearsal every week. You know? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. so in in the, let's let's get to like what we're doing now. Like, so obviously we're all stuck in the house. Um, what do you, what are you doing to pass the time? Because yeah. out of all my friends, I feel like you're the one that's either having the most fun or have or going the most crazy. I can't tell which one it is. <laughs> both, both, both. It's a combination of both. So, um, in the beginning, it was like hilarious because we thought it was like so odd it's just i can't find another word it was not frightening it was not scary it was not great it was it was just odd and everybody was like hmm in my house like i'm here just with my parents and i decided to cook a lot so i finally have the time to cook and finally i have people to eat my food they have to eat it because you know when i'm at home i i wouldn't cook because if i cook there's so much food and just one little person me so now i'm totally enjoying cooking <laughs> What do you, and what are you also cooking though? I cooked my Oh, I did everything. I did uh, bell pepper lasagna for my parents. I'm going to make like a cream pumpkin soup. Um, literally my dad just cooked today and he made Thai um, Thai beef salad. And it was so fucking hot. I lost my voice and I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck, dad. I have to talk to Ken. I can't I can't talk like this." It was super spicy, but I didn't want to give him credit because my dad is like you know haha daughter this food was too spicy you can't eat it i made it and i'm like i was sitting there like sweating my ass off it was so hot but i was like mm -hmm. it's very good dad. Uh, <clears throat> is it me or is it europeans that try to impress you with the intensity of food at times it's ties Thai? okay it's a tie problem okay. <laughs> And yeah, and if we're not cooking, um, we also, I don't know if you have seen my latest Instagram story about the New Orleans crawfish boil. No, what's that? There's a new Netflix show and I love it. It's about cooking and the history of food and dishes and people and blah. And I wanted to show my dad one episode that is about dumplings because I wanted to I think we lost Jen for a second. Uh, let's just see if we can get her back up. Hold on one sec. Oh, Jen, you, we no. lost you for one second. We're good. We're back. Am I back? Yeah, you're back now. Sorry. I just announced everybody that you were, uh, you know, your spaceship, you're too, you're out of orbit. You're yeah, too yeah. high. <laughs> I know, I know. The lost reception for a second up in the sky. Anyway, yeah, so I'm cooking and uh, also I'm knitting. Oh, really? And, and you know what's the most brutal thing about the lockdown situation? I had no intention of staying that long at my parents' place, so I didn't. Ken, smile. Oh, so yeah. You look pretty grumpy. Smile. Good. No, no, no. I was just trying to figure out what happened with your stuff. Oh, keep talking, though. I'm listening. So, uh, yeah, and I traveled here, and I didn't bring a guitar with me. Oh, really? Why not? I didn't expect me to stay that long, so I was like, yeah, three days without a guitar, that's fine, but not three weeks. <laughs> So today I, I talked to a friend of mine and I was like, dude, can I borrow one of your guitars, please? So now I've got a guitar. I've got, um, I made him um, give me his uh, Iron Label, Ibanez Iron Label. Oh, that's good. That's a good guitar. I like that. Yeah, it's a good one. It's literally the same one, like the Action Label that I have, uh, the purple one 
with the beautiful pickup. <laughs> Just saying. Fishman Fluence Modern, I believe. Oh no, we made you those custom gold. Well, you made those for me. I know. We, we took for a... everybody who doesn't know the story. So I received this beautiful guitar, and it ha it has other pickups inside, and I'm like, man, I don't want that, but. They looked really cool. They were like, how do you call that color? Like oily, burned oily? It was, it was burnt, basically. Yeah, just a, just a relic finish. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I talked to Ken, and I'm like, hey, can we put Fishman's in there? And I remember then you disappeared for a while. And then out of a sudden, I was vi visiting friends, and there's like a FaceTime call. And Ken's like on video call, and he's like, look at these six. We made these six pictures <laughs> for you. Pick which one do you want, the more blue one or the more purple one? <laughs> that was hilarious. Well, Seriously, it's so good. Well, we had one of our engineers, Matt. We have two mats, but one of the mats was uh, – he was sitting there with a blowtorch, you know what I mean, like just like burning <laughs> these things. But he I, he did such a good job with that. I thought I thought your pickups yeah. came out really great. So they are so good. I love them. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> so what? Um. So other than that, like other than practice and stuff, it looked like you were. So I went to your Instagram and I saw you hanging out with an older gentleman. I don't know if that was your father, but you were playing the accordion, right? Yeah. Tell me about. Well, tell me wait. about. That's where I thought you were going crazy. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. So, uh, my parents live in this area, and there's a young guy. He's like living close by, and he's like throwing old stuff out of his basement. So my dad, he he likes to collect stuff. So he went over there. And he was like, "Ooh, this is an accordion. Amazing. Do you need it? Do you throw it away?" And the dude was like, "Yeah, I'm throwing it away." And my dad like was like, "No, you're not. I'm taking it." <laughs> so out of a sudden, I I see this accordion sitting in like our in the living room and I'm like dad what is this yeah and he's like well why not let's play the accordion so literally I started playing that instrument I don't know like four hours before I did the video with my dad together yeah I wouldn't call myself like I play it I produce noise out of it that's more likely <laughs> because it's it's so tough I had no idea so Kudos to everybody who plays the accordion. It's not easy. <laughs> like you have to focus on the melody with the right hand, then push the right bass buttons on the left hand, and then that movement is just like totally fucked up for my head. <laughs> Three things at the same time. I can. I'm good at this. So that is doable, but that is just like no. Nope. It's so funny because okay, so I I, I think you grew up in a musical family. I take it right. Well, my dad is a bass player. Okay, so my father, my father played surf rock uh, keyboards. Like, like you know, what I'm talking about. He was in a surf rock band, but he played the keyboards. So when I was a little kid, actually, let me let me show you this. Hold on a second. I'm gonna get up and watch. <laughs> and while Ken is gone, I can I can use the stream to say, "Hi, Simona." Hi, so I keep these I keep Hi, these in my studio at all times. So these are pitch, home pictures of me, right, as a baby. Here's me. Playing with this is my dad playing with lower, lower, oh, lower, lower, a little bit lower. Yeah, perfect. This is my dad playing piano to me, right? And this that's is adorable. This is me smoking a cigarette like the Van Halen cover as a baby, <laughs> being a. That's not adorable. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is uh, right here, me trying this instrument out, the drums, and then I play the the guitar as a piece of wood that used to be a door stopper, right? Amazing. But my dad played, my dad grew up playing the accordion. So, like, you're the only person that I knew that plays the accordion, uh, you know, out of my friends. So, it's so hard because he. I don't. Well, you're, you're, <laughs> you could play like. I produce noise, I don't play it. <laughs> yeah, you could kind of play, but it was amazing to me, like, how hard that instrument is. And, like, he plays it really well, and I've never seen him in my life play the accordion my, my whole entire life. And he pulled it out once, and, like, I almost started crying. Like, I was like, it was so. Wow. It was so good to see someone, like, you know, my dad play that type of instrument. You know what I mean? So, it was pretty cool. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> the only song I'd ever want to learn how to play on the accordion is Popeye. Good one. Dun, 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 I was thinking dun, dun, about maybe dun. I should take like a like a real accordion song, but I'm you know I'm I'm miss positive vibes and good energies and spread happy feelings. So I was like, you know what people need right now is like a positive melody, something that is connected to something positive. So obladi oblada, life goes on, awesome. Yeah, I was like, yeah, let's do that. I would really appreciate you learning Popeye for me. That would make my day better. <laughs> hey, we'll, we'll see about that. We'll see. 
You know, it's actually really... I still have a lot of time, though, so... I know. Who knows? I know. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, is with this whole virus and stuff, you, you get to see, like, how people react to what, pe what songs people... Uh, select in order to play like on their rooftops and balconies and stuff and yeah. and it, it's funny it's like i'm a huge beatles fan there's people that love the rolling stones but i'm just so happy to be like a huge beatles fan and i noticed that imagine is that song i was just having this yeah. conversation with somebody it's like john lennon wrote the most amazing and appropriate song for like a world crisis or an excite or a great yep. moment it's like imagine is like i think the best song ever written for this type of yes it's a great song absolutely agree on that yeah, yeah. and i heard it like a lot of times on the radio it's the radio stations they change what they play a little bit it, it turned into this positive kind of like giving hope kind of music you know it's, <laughs> yeah. it's i love it it's no longer mainly about broken hearts and stuff like that you know oh you broke my heart bitch fuck <laughs> off or something it's more like hey let's have some good vibrations or i don't know <laughs> don't worry be happy <laughs> I like it. It's good. People finally look at positive things. I, I know. I know. It's 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 one of those things. I I listen to music in order to gain type like a life reaction to a certain whatever I'm feeling at the time. So obviously, I think "Don't Worry, Be Happy" and all those songs. Like it depends on what mood you're in, but there's appropriate place for every single song that's out there. Yep. So I agree. And you know what? That's literally what music should do or is doing for most of the people that are receptive enough. It's like music, if you hear a melody in combination with chords that creates a feeling and an emotion and the emotion and the feeling creates a picture or a scenery or a movie or that even creates more emotions and, and connected pictures and vibes and everything. And that is what music for me personally is about. It's, it's not about how fast can I play. It's not about how loud can I play. It's how much emotion can I wake up inside of people you know what I mean yeah it's like that is music and I think now like people listen more intensively to music I don't know why exactly uh, also like people start spending more time with friends family like maybe not in person because we're not allowed to gather stop looking so grumpy smile <laughs> I'm so Good. happy you have no idea yeah. I always smile. <laughs> Look at me, like when we take a screenshot, me like, huh? Ah, yeah. You're like the grumpy dude. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I, I totally see like people are connecting. Yeah. Connecting is a good word. They are really connecting. And and that's a beautiful thing. But Because like I said in one of my posts, I truly believe that we'll make it out of this whole thing um, stronger than before. And we'll be one. We'll do that as one giant race. And the race is called humans. Finally, it doesn't matter anymore. Like country borders don't really matter, except the ones that are close, Canada, and Mexico, <laughs> and everything around Germany is close. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's it's more about the people and the human race instead of making all these different. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's just my opinion. It's 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 kind of crazy. Like, so this is this is a question that I've had about. I didn't know this about your life until I sent. Oh God, who who, who sent the question? No, no, no. But no, it's me. It's this is a question that I personally have. But like, so oh, God. so my girlfriend now fiance, she she came to one of your shows and she dropped off some gear to you, and you were talking to her about uh, running a music school. She also runs a music school, and I didn't know that you had a music school. So with that being said, like, how how's the business been affected by this whole shutdown? I mean, are you going to online stuff for your students, or how is it working? How are you surviving? So my music school is closed, of course, right now. Um, literally by law, we were all the music schools were forced to close their doors on I think last mid last week or something. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, I I was mine was closed already when I heard about the whole Corona. Oh, can we can we exchange the word Corona with something awesome? The virus, like, the death virus. <laughs> no, let's, no, let's call it grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. Okay, we'll Here call we it. So, yeah. When the grilled cheese sandwich came up, I had to close my music school, yeah. which was a tough thing because I have uh, drum teachers, guitar teachers, uh, yeah. piano teachers. Well. So I told everybody to stay home and we shut down the school until the end of the Easter holidays. Yep. Um, from then on, we'll, we'll take a look if we'll go into online lessons, offering online lessons. Via, you know, there are so many 
so many options nowadays with WhatsApp or FaceTime or Skype or Zoom or Discord, like so many. Um, whether we're going to do that or maybe if the situation is finally a little bit better and the grilled cheese sandwich has disappeared a little bit. So we will go back to normal teaching, which would be my preference because I am, I'm very old school when it comes to a lot of things. And I think teaching face to face in person is just you can replace it with an online lesson. Yeah. Well, have you moved to online lessons at all, though, like during this like during this crisis at all? Uh, during this crisis, no. I still have to do five Skype lessons that I sold two years ago for my insanity crown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have all the time in the world to do it now, so it's not that bad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, maybe some of my crowdfunder supporters are here. If you have bought a Skype lesson with me, during that phase, yeah, we can do that within the next days, weeks, months, <laughs> who knows. <laughs> <laughs> Call me anytime. I'm up all, all, all night, all day. Well, yeah. so, um, so what's the repercussions of that? Uh, I mean, as far as where you live, is the government helping you out in any way or is the government helping yes. small businesses out? Yes, the, the government uh, <coughs> is going to put out a lot of money for solo artists for little tiny you know companies like i don't know also maybe like hairdressers or anything any any freelance person literally every freelancing that goes like into music or entertaining business or whatever like dance schools music schools music teachers and uh yeah so the government is about to help it's it's pretty much i have a very good friend in the states tony he lives in new york so we keep updating each other yep about what's going on so we're literally the <coughs> same we're the same here in germany like you guys in the states so oh, okay do they um that's a that's actually pretty incredible it's it's good that they're helping you guys out a lot of companies are gonna fail all over the world based off of this whole catastrophe so unfortunately i i heard my piano is broke oh really this is horrible that's really bad yeah well i mean other like fast food i don't want to name anybody but if they would that wouldn't be, but my piano can't be broke. <laughs> that's that's that Italian place that's kind of, they serve the food right in front of you, right? Va yeah. yeah. I just ate there. And they cook it right in front of you. You know, it was invented by two guys who work for Mac, Mac Grill, whatever. And they were like, there's going to be a healthy version of this, like make really good pasta <laughs> as a sort of fast food chain. Yeah. And then they invented Va piano. I have a huge problem with, I mean, that, that place is pretty good, but I have a huge problem with Italian food outside of my house. Uh, like, cause I'm Italian. So everything is amazing here. You are? Yeah. Hun uh, hun like I'm like 70% Italian. I have no clue. Susi. <laughs> I think. Well, it could be Susi, right? <laughs> well, it is. Or it's Susi. Yeah. There's actually, Who knows? there's actually a club in uh, uh, the Reaper Bond that's named Susi's. I don't know if you've ever walked by it. It's a Susi Showgirls. Isn't it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So next time I'm in Hamburg, I'm gonna take a picture and send it to you, and I'm gonna go like, "Is that the place you talk e about?" Everyone always does. There's just so there's there's dancing girls in there just to let you know. <laughs> I went. So I wouldn't even be special if I send you that picture. Damn it. Uh, I was just there, so I took a bunch of pictures, but that's cool. Okay. But no, I'm Italian, so Italian food in my house is the best. And then when I leave, I went to Venice, and there's great foods there, but I was there for the pastries, not for the Italian food. Uh -huh. How do you like your pizza? All my, my fan club admins are going to love this conversation right now. I could send you, if you have the ingredients, I could send you, I make my own homemade pizza and I think it's excellent. I could send you the recipe. Okay. How about Hawaiian pizza? Do you like Hawaii pizza, Hawaii? There is a lot of people, that's a big debate right there, right? I personally like, <laughs> I personally like pineapple and I won't order it that way. But if there is like a party and there's a pizza on the table with pineapple, I'll I'll secretly go over there, have a slice. Uh, what's what's the comment section right now? Comment section. What do they write about pineapple pizza? Well, a lot of people saying, uh, "Guys, I'm too hungry now." So, <laughs> so <they're, laughs> you guys are making me hungry. Uh, and yeah, people like Ken. Do you like pineapple pizza? I don't, Rita. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> I do, but I shouldn't admit it out loud. Uh, people are asking actually about uh, a solo album. Do you have one coming out soon? Oh, God, guys, I know, I know. It's like everybody tells me, like, awesome, you're in lockdown. Write your third solo album. But you know what, people? 
creativity doesn't really just come knocking on your door and go like, hey, here I am, let's work. <laughs> so um, yeah, my, my main problem was I have the time, yes, but I, until today I had no guitar. Yep. So now that I have a guitar and I'm using a little Yamaha THR amp because that's all I have in my car. Yeah. Um, I'm probably going to write some stuff. And I already have some songs that I have written in the past, which are not published yet. I, I made, I mean, uh, there's this one song called Method to My Madness. And I played it at your uh, Fishman booth at the NAMP show. It's awesome. Um, but thank you. But um, yeah, I haven't put it on an album. So there is stuff being created these days, but it's not like I would go, yes, absolutely. As soon as the grilled cheese sandwich quarantine is over, I'm going to have my new album. <laughs> yeah. First of all, we're still working on the Something on the Eleven project because it's very, I know, I know everybody's waiting, but I promise it's going to be out there and you will be part of an exclusive crowdfunder because we're not going to put it online. There's no way to listen to the music yeah. if you don't order it. So there's physical copies only. No iTunes, no Google Play, no Amazon Music. Nope. Nothing like that is going to happen. So whether you are part at the crowdfunder as soon as we put it online in five, six years when I'll find the time to do that. No, I can't. I don't have my excuse now anymore. I will put that crowdfunder online and then you can order it. Yeah. Let's first do something on 11 and then we'll talk about the Gemma Jura third solo album. I don't even have a clue what I'm going to call it. Grilled cheese sandwich. Um, That's a good title. Yeah. Mozzarella sticks. Grilled cheese sandwich music. Maybe maybe mozzarella sticks, something like that. Mozzarella. Gemma Jura in the, in the mozzarella sticks band. <laughs> <laughs> Just letting you know. Good. Yeah. No, so perfect. So okay, we'll go to we'll go to one question that is from Simona that is a gear related question. Um, in which ways your fishman gear define your performance during uh, the recording of your solo album or during your live show? So in which way are you using how, how is it making your live okay. show yeah better? So um, we've just been recording a couple of songs in Nashville for the new Evanescence album. And it was funny enough because I have this rack and there's like, um, everything is twice there. Like the main helix and the spare helix and the, the main Fishman stuff and the synergy stuff and everything is in there. And um, I remember that I asked my, my, my tech was, <laughs> my tech was asking what part of your rack do you need? And I, see, I said, just give me the synergy part. So I literally just had one rack version on top of the power amp. And I realized that, especially in the studio, if you work with high gain, nah, not true, not only especially in the studio, also for live shows, because that was the main reason why I came up talking to Ken, because I was so fed up with all that humming and the feedbacks and the, the noise, the literally the normal noise a guitar makes as soon as you higher the gain. It's like yeah. all the time. And I said, like, this is horrible, especially with the, the chopped riffs that we play in Evanescence. You can't go, uh, 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 yeah. uh, 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 <laughs> it's not cool. Which, which riff all. is that for Evanescence? Going under. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's the song where I really, I, I was like about to throw my guitar off stage. I was so sick of that feedback. Yeah. And ever since I realized in the studio, when you use your Fishman pickups, it's just so, so much more enjoyable to play your <laughs> instrument because it, does, it doesn't make all these humming sounds, all those nasty, disturbing sounds. It's just really cool. And what I totally like is that you can hear a really, really good difference if you, if you use your switch, for example. I'm maybe I, I turn out to be an idiot now, but when I was small, I had like a um, a very affordable guitar <laughs> with a five-way switch. Yeah, and I was able to listen to like okay, there's a really good difference between if I put it on the on the fret, like the the neck pickup or the bridge pickup, and everything in between was just a slightly little bit different. But with the Fishmans, I really hear like every single position has a very clear, definable sound. And for example, I used to use different guitars for um, doubling in the studio. Yeah. So um, I was like, you know what? I don't need different guitars. Let me just switch Voice two. between the pickups. Yeah. 
And that's just perfect because that, like the the sort of low end that is missed by the by the bridge pickup and the other way around, I can just like fill up all those frequencies when I when I record in the studio, and yeah. it was. I was super happy. That's what that's what I do too. Like it, with my metal band, you know, I'll play in voice one on the moderns, and I'll just hit voice two for a double track, and it's a different pickup completely. Yeah. It's so awesome. So exactly. So not to sway away from the gear talk because we're not here to sell stuff. It's Rita has a great question. If you came with a warning label, what would that be? A what? A warning label. Like, what should people watch out for if they were to buy you in a package? <laughs> if they were going to get their very own Gen Majura, what are they? What what should say caution? <laughs> There's too many, right? May maybe the biggest one would be be careful, do not lose your mind or something. <laughs> do not feed do not feed the animal. So yeah, do not feed exactly. <laughs> So Simona is uh, the admin of my Gemma Jura Italia club, and Rita is the admin of Gemma Jura Canada. Oh, they're, so they're blowing up this spot right now. So let's <laughs> all right. So let's let's not even go there. What? Ta tell me about now. I I've been in the industry for like twenty years. I do not have my own personal fan club. Got close, but not 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 even close to where you're at. What? Tell me about your fan I club. You. I told you I'm going to create one Ken Susie fan club only for you. You should. <laughs> um, well, to be honest, it started out with the very first were the Brazilians. Yep. But that, I don't know why. They posted two pictures and then they disappeared or something. I, I don't know. Um, and then out of a sudden, there was this page called Gemma Jura Italia. Yeah. And that page was just like a, like a twin to my page. She reposted everything. She found pictures that even I was like, what the heck? Where did she find that picture? So uh, Simona was the first one, yeah. and that quickly increased the whole thing to Rita with Gemma Jura Canada, Savannah with Gemma Jura USA, and then we have Kirsten with Gemma Jura Netherlands, and uh, Sasha with Gemma Jura Germany, and Marie with Gemma Jura Belgium. I've never said my name so many times in a row. <laughs> Gemma Jura. And yes, to be honest, I talked to all my admins because... I love them for what they do for me. They advertise, they spread the word. They they are just phenomenal, passionate people, you know? And and I'm very grateful for what they do. Yeah. Really. That's awesome. Well, I saw a video, speaking of the Beatles, we started off this conversation talking about the Beatles. I saw a video of John Lennon at his mansion later on when he was out of the Beatles and he was with uh, Yoko Ono, whatever. They were just at their house and there was somebody squatting on his property. He was like basically living on his property at his house and his security guard found them. And, he, and John Lennon actually like brought the guy to the door, confronted him about what well, I forget. It's, it's a good video. It's on YouTube. But he's like the, the guy basically who was homeless was saying like, you speak to me. I want I know that in your lyrics, you're talking to me. And John Lennon was just kind of like, oh, well, I just write about whatever, whatever I feel with Yoko Ono or, you know, if I'm on the toilet, I just write whatever I want. I'm not speaking to you. So he invites him in. And they have dinner, gets them showered, fed, and then sends them off on his way. I've heard you've had the same issue with people trying to stalk you or find you at your house. Well, it was not people. It was one person. And the first time he tried to, he found out my phone number. He found out where I lived. And the first time he called me and left me a voice message was, um, I was in Las Vegas for the rehearsals, for the final rehearsals before our Synthesis World Tour. And he left me a message and I was like, who the fuck is that guy? I don't know. So I called him back and he's like, the conversation started with, um, well, Jen, you don't know me, but I know you. Nice. And I was like, dude, this is not cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're not home and somebody tells you he's standing in front of your apartment. It's like, great, yeah. not. And yeah, and uh, right before I left for NAM in January, he showed up at my front door again and I just don't think that's a cool thing to do because you can be a fan as much as you want, but you have to respect the privacy of a person. Yeah. And you cannot just show up and just go like interact with these people in public and think they're like your friends and talk private to them in on their private property. Yeah. That's just not cool and that's just not what you do. So yeah. yeah. 
Well, I think when you're a musician, yeah. you there's a there's obviously you should be invited in order to speak to somebody or talk to them. If there was someone from your fan club that does a lot of work for you and you actually genuinely like that person, then yeah, you could have dinner, you can hang out. But it's that's up to the discretion of the artist, not necessarily just because they play in a band doesn't mean that you have full access to them. And I get that a lot. Working for Fishman, yeah. you know, I'm on the road, so I'm half of half of me is at the office, half of me is still playing with my band on Earth. And people seem right. to think that if I'm on the phone and I walk by them, I'm a jerk because I'm on the phone and walk by them. But half the time, like, you know, online <laughs> people write, oh, I met that guy. He, you know, he wasn't, he was real quick with me or whatever. And I'm like, hey, I got a life. We all have lives. There's no reason exactly. why people should be showing up to your door. It's, there's a time and a place. You know what? I give you something very special now, just because I see it right now. You showed me those pictures from your yeah. childhood, yeah. right? Okay. Watch this. This is a horrible picture that my parents put out on the wall. Like, can you see that? Uh, go up a little bit for me. Oh, okay, I see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this uh, so do, is do me a favor. On the live stream, move uh, left a little bit. Yep, right there. Oh, my God. That looks great. Where's your, why, is your, why are your eyes shut? <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> That's so amazing. This picture is going to be all over Instagram and Facebook tomorrow. Ah, oh, Jen, are you really sure you just did that? Yes, I did. Okay. That's that's amazing. <laughs> I think I think every it's every parent's right to embarrass their kids. Yes, yes, yes. I think so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing during your lockdown i am personally i'm making pizza upstairs it's funny that you just said that you know you're cooking and stuff i also cook constantly but i have a few people in my house my parents are also in my house because we're building uh in-law attached to my home so cooking i'm gonna be putting my head in front of a mesa eight by uh sorry four by ten cab four by twelve cab like literally um remiking i'm doing a grunge record so i'm gonna be checking the phase on my microphones Wait, guitars. I... Just partying. That's what I do. Right? <laughs> Just enjoy the time you finally have without running from appointment A to appointment B. And yeah, it's, it's great. I, I kind of like really enjoy it. And my mom said today, like, when was the last time that we actually had time together? Because usually, you know, I'm always on the run. I never have time. Yeah. So I'm like walking through the door in this apartment. And I'm like, hi, mom, let's have a coffee. Okay, I got to go. Bye. <laughs> So this time, I'm like, really, I'm hanging out with my parents, and we enjoy each other's company. And she's like, within the last 14 years, we never had that. Yeah. And she's right. Well, so it's well, yeah, it's you're touring thing. all the time, and you know, being a professional musician is really tough, especially when you have a busy schedule. Your parents get older, kids get, you know, your brothers and sisters or whatever have kids, and then they get older. Next thing you know, you you you're the same person. Everyone comes back, and they're all different. Yeah. I, yep. I get that. So um, so a. Uh, uh, as far as this crisis goes, um, I know a lot the of people, a, a lot of musicians are a bit affected by this thing, right? The, the grilled cheese crisis, yeah. yeah. By the way, this whole this whole feed is about pineapple pizza. I don't, <laughs> I don't even want to, I don't even go there. But anyway, so how many musicians have been that you know have been directly affected by this 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 grilled cheese crisis? And uh, obviously, they had to stop tours. Um, anybody you know that's been, you know, strung up for cash? So so many. I mean, when um, that one dude over there on your side of the pond decided to close the borders and have no more airplanes from Europe, yeah, I know that Alex Golnick with Testament, they had to jump on the plane and leave immediately. Alice Cooper, in the middle of the tour after five shows, canceled, had to fly back. Devin Townsend, he was touring, canceled, go back. Um, here in Germany, a lot of like local musicians, they, they don't have any gigs. They lose money up to like, I don't know, 10, 20 grand by now. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's not funny at all. So I get it why everybody goes to like online sessions and online lessons and people, I saw it on the TV today. Like there's some, I think right now happening some like a, uh, like an internet stream concert of different German artists. Yep. They join hands to entertain people and probably gain some money and, and, and raise some money. And um, I've been asked by several promotion companies if I would be like, if I would like to be part of that, like, like a, like an internet platform concert or something. That's cool. And I said absolutely yes, because I support that. First of all, you have content for people to watch because if you're just sitting at home, that's what you do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Second, you can raise money for an, 
for example, if I'm a musician and I lost my gig and I, I have bills to pay, and let's say I'm in a less fortunate situation than me because I am in a very happy and lucky position. Yeah. Let's keep it that way. So um, I wouldn't need to raise money for myself, but my thought was with the money that I would raise with an internet concert or a streaming live concert or whatever it is, um, I want to collect the money and uh, donate it to the local animal shelter because I have this animal shelter close to where I live and I, I go there every week and just take dogs out for a walk. You know, it's, it's good for me. Awesome. I, I go outside and the dogs can enjoy a little bit their walk as well. Yeah. And I think by all these grilled cheese crises, everybody's like worried about mainly their own asses. Yeah. Toilet. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, those poor dogs are hanging out in that animal shelter and somebody needs to walk them and they still want to eat. Even though everybody's worrying about buying toilet paper, still those dogs need help. So I will raise money with uh, uh, like that concert, that streaming concert that we're planning right now and donate the money that I get for that to the uh, animal shelter. Is there any specific animal shelter that you want your fans to know of uh, what to donate to when this is all over? Oh, it's a, it's a tiny little – I can't tell you because it's next door to where I live. <laughs> okay. No worries. Uh, <laughs> unfortunate for that particular animal shelter. <laughs> For that particular, animal you can't. Shelter. Yeah, you can't disclose who they are, but that's fine. <laughs> um, no, that's really that's really great of you, and uh, it's it's cool that you're paying it forward and paying it back. That's that's awesome. Is there any is there any band? I know a lot of bands are doing what is it called? Um, GoFundMe's, right? Is there anybody that uh, any GoFundMe's that are notable to you? Because I know Devin, Devin Townsend started a GoFundMe for just his text. The guys who work for him. That is amazing. Yeah. So Devin. Such a good person. Yeah. yeah. I love that guy. So he thought, like, because they're going to be losing the most money. I mean, he's obviously going to lose money, but I'm sure he might be okay enough to, you know, get the tour down the line. But the, his, the guys that work for him need the money right away. Yeah, 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 sure. Let me think about that. I, I haven't, shame on me, poo poo, but I haven't thought about this yet. So who knows? Maybe I'll come up with something. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm always like, support people, you know, like, finally start or stop watching only about yourself and only about your life and your situation. Like we need so much more. We need a broader view these days, especially in times of grilled cheese sandwich virus. <laughs> and and it's, it's so important to take care about others. You know, like I would, I would go through the, through the entire neighborhood and knock on doors where I know that they're like, elderly people living and I would collect their their little shopping list and go grocery shopping for everybody and, and put it in front of their door when I'm done you know like to help people yeah and the cool thing is when you do a good thing even if it's just you say thank you to the madam sitting at the grocery store when she's like there and she's working her ass off and you just buy toilet paper like crazy and, and try to make it out of the grocery store as fast as possible I stopped the last time I was grocery shopping and I was like talking to that woman and I was like, you know what? Thank you very much because you keep pushing, you keep working, you're here for everybody. And I think it's time that somebody finally says, thank you. Yeah. And she was so happy. She was the cutest little old lady. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like we need to think broader. Yeah. Right now. In Massachusetts, I don't know if it's all of Massachusetts. I'm not sure if it's in America, but we've, uh, our, supermarkets or grocery stores have um, allowed senior citizens to go in first before everybody first, yes. let them That's shop. That's such a good thing, yeah. Yeah, because it's sad. It is sad. People kind of wiped out the shelves here, and then you have old, old people coming in later. They There's nothing there for them to grab. It, it, it kind of stinks, so – same, same here. So I'd say, I would say if you're, you know, anyone who's out there that knows that there's, if there's a little old lady down the street from your house, go knock on a door, ask her if she needs anything, be cool about it. If exactly just don't go to Jen Bajura's house, <laughs> she's gonna kill you. Don't knock on my yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, she's gonna run you <laughs> over with her with her Lamborghini. <laughs> well, what is so? So, I would like to thank you for you know spending some time on the Fishman side. I think this conversation was really cool, and especially for your fan base to, to know what you're doing. I know I've, I've seen that you've been trying to do this like you know on your own socials anyway, keep everybody updated as to what you're doing, but this was really cool of you to catch up with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Your family, your family too. I'm hanging out with my parents. I'm hanging out with you guys. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I know I'm planning on my most favorite new thing is like crushing live streams. Wherever there's a live stream, uh, Rob Chapman was doing a live stream earlier today. And so I went there and talked about his new haircut the whole time and distracted <laughs> him a little bit. And the other day I, I joined Mrs. Smith, yeah, which was super fun. And, you know, like, why not spread some good vibes and talk to people, communicate instead of just sitting in front of your cell phone or TV or whatever. Yeah. I think it's, it's time to, to connect well, and we'll get out of this healthy and all together. That's awesome. Well, hey, listen, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for everything. I'm going to end this feed with the fans. Stay, stay here for a sec, Jen. But uh, guys, thank you very much for watching Fishman Live, and we'll have more artists on here very soon. Keep your eyes peeled. Thank you.